if you ever want to have a good lesson on how to cheat, you should play bocce ball with a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. It is out of control. This brings me to what I want to talk about today, is the whole idea of assessment and cheating, especially as we've been bringing face-to-face -face courses online. Not even exaggerating, I'm having this discussion multiple times a day. So today I just want to talk about the three things I think we can do to help get rid of this whole cheating epidemic, as some are calling it, especially when we're dealing with online. But first things first, I'm going to go for a run. So one thing I think we really need to discuss is the whole idea of the assessments that we're giving our students. I come at this specifically from a trades background and it has never made sense even when I was going through school myself as to why we were testing with multiple choice questions and fill in the blanks when we're trying to train people to construct and troubleshoot and build and maintain things. How on earth is a multiple choice test going to assess that? And another thing is, like I tell my students all the time, is the only thing that getting good on an exam like that teaches you or tells you about yourself is that you're good at taking tests. And that's not the way it is in real life, is it? Like honestly, how often do we come to a problem and we've got A, B, C, or D are our choices? No, we come to problems and they're complex and they're ill-structured. And we need to work with people and collaborate and research. And those are the type of assessments I think we need to be talking about. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. I still got, I'm only, I'm only two kilometers into a six kilometer run, so I best get going and uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Why would you take your dog to the park and then just brush them there and leave it there? It's so weird to me, but I see this happen all the time. There's a pile of hair. Why would you do that? Just brush your dog in the backyard or something. Jeez. One thing that I think we really got to think about is while this is just, there's been a lot of just hurry up and get stuff online, hurry up, make it work, hurry up, let's figure out how to solve the whole problem with cheating and plagiarizing and all that fun stuff. We need to rethink, how are we doing this? How is education being done? Because one of my biggest fears in all of this, and as awful as this whole pandemic is, is that we're just going to go back to the way things were. We're not going to take the opportunity to learn from this. And there's so much that can be done. We know that there's a problem with the way we assess. We know there's a problem with the way we deliver content. We know that we have the internet. We have all this connectivity that we've never had before that we can make work for us, but we've been too busy trying to just fix and maintain what we already have. Maybe now is the time to rejig the system. I guess Frisbee's all right, as long as you stay six feet apart. Look, I'm not saying that education is all broken, and I think there's so much good that's coming from it and that can come from it, and has come from it. I mean, I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for the education I got. So one of the things I mentioned at the beginning of this video was that there's three things that I think we can do to effectively help in the battle against plagiarism, the battle against all this cheating, this online cheating that's becoming rampant now apparently. So here's my first tip, start trusting the students. I'm not sure where this whole idea that all students are cheaters came from. For the most part, when I think back in my own practice and for the students I've actually taught, there are so many of them that are actually not out to just cheat the system, that actually want to get the best education they can and effectively are working hard at making sure that they get that. It ends up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy that if you sit there and you think all your students are cheaters, then they're just going to prove you right. So let's start trusting our students. Just like Jesse Stommel says in this tweet here, we can't control students nor should we try actually seems antithetical to the project of education. What we can do is start from a place of trust, talking to students about what plagiarism is. It's an incredibly complex conversation. Trust is pedagogically effective. It's amazing what can happen when you start trusting your students. And yes, there are going to be those ones that disappoint you. There's no doubt about it. But really, at the end of the day, they're only hurting themselves. We don't need to take these things so personally. I understand that we spend a long time working hard on our assessments and we spend a long time working hard and making sure that our students get the information and it feels like it's a slight against us when they cheat. Our students have lives outside of our classroom that we have no idea of what's going on. So let's start cutting our students some breaks and start coming at it from a position of trust.
One thing we can do is we can talk to our students about this whole issue as well. Like, why do we have to have these conversations behind their back? Why can't we bring them into the conversations as well? Maybe ask the question, if you were going to cheat, why do you feel like you would need to cheat? And have those conversations. And they're not easy conversations. Like Jesse Stommel said in that tweet before, they're difficult conversations, but they're enriching and they're actually respectful and they bring your students into the whole problem. So why not bring them into the problem, have a discussion about it, and see if we can figure a way to solve it all together. And the final thing, and this is by no means like the final discussion on this whole topic, but the final thing I want to talk about is, what if we started redesigning our assessments? What if we started making our assessments more collaborative? And this is something that's kind of been rooming around in my head for a long time, and I've been practicing and trying this out. It works. Why are we making, like I said before, why are we making our students show us that they can memorize when we need to have them show us that they can think and they can problem solve and they can collaborate and that is not difficult to do in assessment. Instead of our assessments being summative in the sense that we're getting our students to show us everything they've learned, why can't we make them formative in the sense that they can actually help them learn and they can help them identify gaps. There's so much more power to assessment than we allow it to have and there's so much fear to assessment that we have put in our students. One thing that some people are doing, and this is a shout out to the uh, College of the North Atlantic, is we put together a Google Doc. It's basically an area that we can share some ideas of things we're doing, some uh, batting around some ideas. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description. Please make sure if you've got any ideas when it comes to assessment, and especially when I'm talking to trades, but anything, just get into that Google Doc and engage, please. And if you want, there's also a Slack group that uh, BC Campus has opened up, Tim Carson from BC Campus. So make sure you hop in there. I'll make sure I add a link in the uh, description below. That's all I got for this week. It's been a long week, everyone. And uh, hopefully you're all staying safe and you're all staying home. Hopefully I'll be able to get a few more of these out soon.